Eastern to start off with. So Henry Clint, who used to be finance director with Dean and Dival for 10 years, now works for uh, a private property uh, investment group. Uh, Henry, can you join me? Mm -hmm. But uh, Henry's going to set the scene for us because uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, some of the profit improvement strategies that have been particularly successful for him over the last few years. And then as we go through, we will have different people talking about different aspects of their business. So Andrew will be focusing on cash flow and sales. Graham will be talking about improvements in his business from a technology and people perspective. So those questions will, will flesh out, hopefully, some more case studies and examples for you of their own individual businesses. And of course, they will be uh, available for you to ask questions to later on. So Henry, set the scene for us as to uh, the theory of profit improvement strategies and what in particular might have been useful for you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, I've been given three or four minutes on this, so uh, I'll um, keep them fa fairly brief. Um, I thought it was a very interesting talk by Mark. He covered a lot of the sort of broad areas and things I very much agreed with. Um, but he didn't quite steal my script. But just, just a few points, uh, just setting the scene, um, Dean and Dollar Construction, privately owned uh, family construction business, um, trading for um, about 40 years until it was sold three years ago. I was the SD there, was very much involved with, with that process. Um, construction, tough old sector to be in, um, but very interesting sector um, when I joined the business um, about just about 12 years ago. It was uh, trading at about 100 million turnover, and the, the profit margin, um, profit to the percentage of turnover was about half a percent. Um, now you think, oh, that's a bit tight, but sure, sure I, I, that's, that's what I, I thought. Um, but actually, the industry standard in, in construction, regional contracting business, is, is about 1.5% margin to turnover. So um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's um, a tight old business to operate in, and uh, a lot of the work that we were doing was in a sort of tendered sector. Um, so um, one of the things um, we decided as a sort of fairly, fairly new management team needed to look at was how we came up with the strategy of improving our profitability. Um, and the, what I, I did to start with, as I suppose um, many accountants do in these situations, um, I think we should, everybody should do and create the time to do, is that, uh, um, start to analyse the data to see whether the systems that, that the company has got in hand can actually generate um, some data for me to analyse it and spend a, a lot of time initially really having a chosen for the data um, and considering why we were operating in, in such a low margin business or indeed were we operating in this very low margin business. Um, and uh, we uh, broke the business down, I mean I, I'd recommend you all do this as, as Mark suggested, but an analyse your business whatever is appropriate for you, but we looked at it in terms of um, sectors, products, customers, geography, um, we cut it and slice it anywhere that we thought to try to identify and get under the skin of why we thought we were operating at low margin. Um, and uh, we, one of the big areas we decided to discontinue doing was operating in the, uh, doing building work for people under contract at about a million pounds. So after, um, and these things aren't obvious when you start out, you don't know where you're going to end up. But we actually <coughs> stopped income streams and stopped doing that sort of work and there were a number of other areas, um, but that, that had quite a big impact on our business to improve our profitability. And we wanted also to get consistency of profitability across the business. So I haven't got a problem with operating in a low margin business as long as that we knew why we were doing it. And the reason um, we continued in some areas that there was low profitability was because it generated a lot of cash flow. Um, I suppose in, in essence we had um, customers money up front, we supplied it, so we paid our suppliers later. It generated cash for the business to enable us to do other things such as prudent property investments and development. <coughs> and other areas of business, such as civil engineering, which were cash negative, but were more profitable. So no problem at all with operating a low margin business, but be very clear about why you're doing it. And if you're not clear about why you're doing it, migrate your business else, migrate your contract and turnover elsewhere to something more worthwhile. The other thing that became clear to me was, and, and is, is quite common in, in small and medium sized businesses, is the, um, the, the, account, the accounting systems, and I don't mean a simple trial balance, but the, the basic management information is, is not up to scratch. And, and uh, I've been working with a number of businesses, particularly collecting and managing and monitoring non-financial information isn't, isn't 
as good as it should be. Um, and um, I've spent quite a bit of time um, putting in fairly simple systems um, to collect um, information so that you can set staff and monitor targets. So that, that's something I'll definitely have a look at. Um, just one or two other particular areas to highlight. Um, if you're involved in, in supplying, um, we're all involved with, with dealing with customers, whatever, whether you're in the service sector, uh, whatever, or manufacturing, whatever you're doing. Um, the key thing for us was delivering um, the product um, first time properly to the customer. Um, and quite often it's hidden if you, if, by management in terms of or the lower levels of management, people in production. Um, and you can find your remedial costs are much, much higher than you might initially realise because it doesn't actually appear anywhere. But, but the staff on, in, on the sort of production side of the business, in, in the case of, of our business, um, construction, were spending an awful lot of time going back to customers um, long after the job was finished with remedial work and arranging subcontractors. Uh, and an, so there were an awful lot of remedial cost, time and distractions for management, which were very difficult to cost to capture, but there was huge distraction in our business. So um, delivering rights first time is, it sounds like a sort of mantra, but it's absolutely um, sort of critical in terms of um, satisfying customers and building up repeat business, which is, um, I always sort of feel you, you can probably make more money by repeating business and, and knowing your customers well um, than um, spending lots of money trying to win new business on uh, expensive campaigns. Um, tendering cost is the other area which um, we had significant success in um, bringing down, um, again, it's a cost that's often hidden, the cost of bidding and tendering for work. Um, have a re really careful view of the, your strike rate, what, what your success rate is in bidding against these things, being very selective on what, what you commit your staff's time to and what you're going to bid for. And we cut down our resources and, and had a much, very much more focused approach. And uh, we put, introduced a system where we graded um, tens um, a to C, really, in terms of A's we had to win because they were right in our patch and absolutely what was described by Mark as ideal customers. And C was one as well, fine, um, if we find ourselves with low capacity, but we're not um, in a desperate sort of rush to get them. But we'll, if we win them, we'll make sure we service them properly. And um, so that sort of targeted approach seemed to do, do pretty well for us. Um, and um, I suppose finally, staff, you couldn't really talk about sort of cost reduction um, without talking a little bit about staff. Um, construction has got a reputation of being higher and fire. Um, we didn't really want to have that um, as our company culture at all. Um, but certainly we, we, we were successful um, in, in some areas um, of introducing incentive schemes. A number of staff welcomed the idea that they would take a, a pay cut from their basic salary um, with an incentivized um, with an incentivized element to it that if everything went well for the company they would benefit. And obviously they would do better than their base salary things generally went well, it was, it was a realistic uh, target or incentive for them. So I think those sorts of uh, areas are worth looking at. And I suppose very finally, um, on the overhead, um, uh, we did have success using external consultants and cost consultants. Um, I think my, my general view, I, I'd agree with what, what Mark said, have a look at your overheads, but also have a look at the amount of throughput and turnover your business can generate to work out correct level of overhead for the current level of turnover that we've got. We found that we had six regional offices and um, we could actually significantly increase our turnover with basically the same regional office structure. But if the turnover fell in a particular region below a certain level, it would be a huge drag on that region and it would probably never make a profit. So getting the turnover right and the, your overhead structure right is, is, is quite important thing to keep on revisiting. Okay, thank you very much, Henry. Henry, is there any final words of wisdom you want to impart with us before we ask if there's any burning questions from the floor? Um, not a great deal. I, I mean, I'm back at what Andrew was saying. I mean, cash management really is, is I you know, put it at the moment, ahead of um, sort of profitability, really, to be honest. I mean, I think we're going through some pretty rough patches. Different sectors, are, uh, some sectors may obviously be enjoying um, better times. Um, Certainly the, the sectors I'm familiar with, which is construction and property, are going through quite a rough time, um, whether it be fall in asset values or collapses in workload and, and uh, a lot of price competition. So I think really I just encourage you to, to, to focus on their cash management, uh, look at their sort of cash model, which you can, which you can actually do quite, quite a lot on sort of 
theoretical basis to work out what your supply chain is, how, when you're when you're paying and match that with your credit terms with your uh, with your with your customers um, and the uh, sort of staff and uh, or maybe weekly or monthly pay, and um, really ensure that um, as a business you've got enough you know, we've all got enough cash to get us through a you know, pretty tricky time. That was all. Really